So I have a couple of questions um, that I'm going to answer. Uh, one is, what is the most important thing that I tried to provide for Mia? And um, I wrote about this in the book quite a bit, um, or maybe not, it felt like quite a bit. Um, for me, it was, um, I listened to some John Gottman, um, I think it was an interview or, or featured on NPR around the time that uh, we lived in the homeless shelter. And he said that a lot of kids who are experiencing a lot in life, um, either from having to go between two homes or, um, you know, whatever, the most important thing that they could have was one stable, very predictable, um, not only adult caregiver, but environment. And so what I did um, from that was when I told her that I was going to pick her up at 445, or I guess when she was really little, it was, you know, right after afternoon snack. Um, I always made sure that I was there at that time. Um, I came in and out of her life like clockwork. I was very predictable. Um, every bath time routine, every bedtime routine, every everything that I could possibly do um, was, you know, one after the next, after the next, after the next. Because uh, I kind of wanted her environment with me to um, click into place when she was there. And I think um, that could go as far as, as most kids who are living in transitional places or poverty. Um, you know, Mia doesn't remember being food insecure. Um, and we were up until the point she was like seven, eight, nine years old. Um, and I was kind of paying attention to it because we, we're now in a situation where we need to like budget groceries and, and you know, go shopping only a couple of times a month. And, um, and she was just like using all the stuff in the house to bake whatever she felt. And um, then I was like, well, don't, don't you remember the times that, you know, we had to make things last for a long time and we didn't just use up everything that we had as soon as we got it from the store. And, and she said, no. Um, so I know it feels like, um, I don't know, it's a horrible time and, and all of this, but, um, the kids kind of turn out okay. I think as long as they have one person and it wasn't only me, like I, I knew that I wasn't enough. So I surrounded Mia with friends and, and, um, teachers and, and people who were in her life in some way. Um, I guess for most it would be family members, but I didn't have that. So um, for the most part, it was, you know, friends who kind of became our family over the years. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I, I think that that's kind of all kids need is just to know that they're loved and that there's an environment where it's not unpredictable. Um, like every time we moved, we moved a lot. Uh, but I would wait until Mia went to her dad's house and I would pack up the whole house, move everything and unpack it and put it like the exact same way that it was before. <laughs> like her container was different a lot. Like I think we moved like 10 times in the span of five or six years and but like her actual life was was very much the same uh another question was um what policies about the government assistance program uh should be changed and i have been talking about this uh as i sigh um uh, for years and years and i think we need to abolish work work requirements um i have written about this i'm trying to place articles about this right now it's still uh especially now um 
it is so just asinine to me that people are required to prove that they are working 30 hours a week in most states um, in order to receive what comes out to be like just over a dollar a meal per person per day. I, I don't see any benefit in that whatsoever. The only thing that benefits requiring people to work for that little amount of food is the people who think that they don't deserve that help or who see it as a handout or, you know, uh, who view it as the same as don't feed the wild animals or don't feed the animals at the zoo. Like that's, um, that's just this whole thing that we have that we are obsessed over, um, working your way up. And I'm, I'm hoping that, um, because of the pandemic, uh, and what is happening, uh, with, you know, the millions of workers in the service industry and domestic workers and care industry and, um, all these people who just lost their jobs and who are now waiting in line for 12 hours to get some food from a food bank, um, we'll start to see that, uh, the fact that we require work for food is, is ridiculous and it, it needs to be abolished. Um, and, and, you know, hopefully it'll stretch to, uh, that we require work for Medicaid and work for, um, child care grants and, and health insurance and all of that, like, you know, just help people out because as we're seeing right now, it doesn't take very much for a person to watch everything that they have in the bank completely disappear and they can't pay rent and they can't feed their families. It takes a matter of weeks and sometimes it only takes a few days of lost wages for that to happen. So I, I hope that um, some of those policies will change. Thank you very much.